So, straight on to the agenda. Apologies for absence, Bev. Right, we have 29 members and fellows who voted online and a further nine who gave their proxy vote to the chairman. I don't intend to read out the 38 names because that would take too long, but yeah, 38 members have apologised. So I've got nine votes? Yes. Those votes will go with the majority, so whichever way that one goes. Okay? All fair? Good. Straight on to the minutes of the 70. To receive and approve the minutes of the Society's 75th Annual General Meeting that was held on the 7th of October at my place. I thought it was actually really exciting to sit there all alone looking at a wall. The strangest ever. Have you all read the minutes? Are there any comments to the minutes? Well, that's one way of doing it. Makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? Let's just grab it into this. The votes from those who voted online were 29-4, no against, one abstention. And what do we have from that? So there's no comments, no modifications, nothing else. Can I have a proposer? Who proposed? Mike Thornton. Oh, Mike. Who seconded? Who will second? Okay. Then we can move on. Thank you very much. Matters arising. <laughs> I've got to get used to this. There's so much to, to technology here. It's getting fine. Matters arising. Are there any matters arising? Then we can move on to the auditor's report. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As your new treasurer, it falls on me to present you with the accounts for the year ending 31st December 2020, which you received along with the rest of the information about today. I trust you have all read and inwardly digested them. Hmm? Under item five of the agenda, I will try to answer any of your questions, but as these are from before my term of office really began, I may well have to defer to Tony, Roger or Bev. In view of the limited activities undertaken by the Society during that year, and in order to limit the costs involved, it was decided by the Executive Committee to ask our, our, to ask our accountants not to do a full audit. The statement from the accountants is shown on page two of the financial report, which I shall now read out. So, Chartered Accountants report to the Board of Members on the preparation of the unaudited statutory financial statements of the Society of Cable Telecommunication Engineers for the year ended 31st December 2020. We have prepared for your approval a financial statement to the Society of cable telecommunication engineers for the year ended 31st December 2020, which comprised a statement of income and reserves, the statement of the financial position and related notes from the society's accounting records and from information and explanations you have given to us. As a member of the firm of Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales, we are subject to its ethical and other professional requirements. This report is made solely to the Board of Members of the Society of Cable Telecommunication Engineers as a body, 
in accordance with the terms of our engagement letter dated 24th of July 2018. Our work has been undertaken solely to prepare for your approval the financial statement of the Society of Cable Telecommunication Engineers and state those matters that we have agreed to state to the boards of the members of the Society of Cable Te Telecommunication Engineers as a body in this report in accordance with the ICAEW technical releases. To the fullest extent permitted by law, we do not accept or assume responsibility to anyone other than the Society of Cable Telecommunication Engineers and its board of members as a body for our work or for this report. It is your duty to ensure that the SCTA has adequate has adequate accounting records and to prepare statutory financial statements that give a true and first view of the society's assets, liabilities, financial position and profit. You consider that the SCTA is exempt from statutory audit requirements for this year. We have not, in, we have not been instructed to carry out an audit or review of the financial statements of the SCTA for this reason, we have not verified the accuracy of completeness of the accountant's records or information and explanations you have given to us, and we do not, therefore, express any opinion on the statutory financial statements. I would emphasise that the external audit process has been the same as in previous years, the main difference being that the Executive Committee take the responsibility for certifying the accuracy of the reported accounts. In the opinion of the Executive Committee, the financial statements give a true and fair view of the state of the society's affairs as at the 31st December 2020 and of its surplus for the year then ended. Thank you very much. You're in the chair again, unfortunately. Yep. Receive and approve the site accounts and balance sheets for the financial year ended 31st December 2020. So again, ladies and gentlemen, I have to report that society has had a much quieter year with the pandemic taking its toll on events. This obviously had a great financial and social impact. It was a great shame the 75th anniversary dinner had to be cancelled. You will have seen from page three of the accounts that we had a surplus of around £63,500 at the end of December 2020, which is some £41,000 higher than the previous year. This is despite the income being some £50,000 down. However, as I have already mentioned because of lockdown, much of the activities of the society were curtailed, which resulted in a great saving in expenditure. This can be seen on page nine of the accounts, which notably with travel and such like, the AGM and lecture meetings and bursaries, plus the Benelux chapter costs and the accountancy fees, a total of £90,000. Generally, the society is in a strong position, financial position and should be able to weather the COVID storm. Does anybody have any questions about the accounts? Uh, I think that might well be answered in the next little bit that I'm going to say for Mike. So if it doesn't, come back to us. Anybody else? Okay. I also feel it important to inform you how the Executive Committee have managed funds during this financial year. Available finance has, is much reduced due to there being no IBC last year and the postponement of this year's to December has meant we have had to keep a much closer eye on what we spend in both the society and the limited company. Obviously, because of COVID, we have not been able to hold conventional meetings and much of our work has been completed via Zoom with weekly operational meetings and monthly finance meetings. 
at the operational meetings, any large spend has to be approved and I produce a forecast for the monthly finance meeting so we can see what the prediction for our end of year will be. This was started in January with predicted income and expenditure for each month and Bev, Bev gives me actual figures on a month by month basis to update. Previously, this was only done on a quarterly basis for the executive committee meetings. So the finance committee sees a monthly prediction which is presented to the whole exec every quarter. Although the expected income from IBC this year is lower than normal, we are still, still predicting a surplus across the society in a limited company of around £200,000, which is obviously good news. Income for the limited company has also been bolstered by the webinars. And thanks, Melissa, to you for organising those. Finally, I must thank the rest of the Finance Committee, especially Bev, for all their hard work. Does, does that answer, Mike? Okay, anybody else got any comments? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the Treasurer's Report and I put the account of the year ending 31st December 2020 to you for your approval, Mr. President. A proposer. Roger Blakeway. Yeah. Seconder. Anybody against? Carried. Yep. <clears throat> the auditors. Okay, John. Our recommendation is the auditors stay the same for the ensuing year, so that will be Menzies. Are there any comments to that? Can I have a proposer and a seconder? Laura and Mike, anybody against? Stop twitching, Melissa. <laughs> so that's also carried. To receive and consider a report for the Executive Committee to the members, have you all read the report? There was not a lot in there, I have to say. I'm very sorry, but we haven't done a lot this year. It has been very sparse. We've tried to do what we can. We've tried to keep webinars going. We've kept podcasts going. And that's what we're really trying to keep up at the moment and ensure our presence is still there, still felt, and we're still relevant for the industry. Are there any comments to the report? <clears throat> Thank you very much. Can I have a proposer and a seconder? Dave and Laura. Dave Fortress and Laura. Anybody against them? <laughs> also carried. The election of the executive committee members we had two valid nominations, Mr. Costa Kuriaku and James Harwood. I have. It's there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Read the instructions, Tony. Come on. As you can see there, I was trying to build up some sort of suspense in this instead of just... <laughs> These two are duly elected again.
That brings us to nine. Any other business? No other business. I think you could uh, you put it perfectly, and it is a formal vote of thanks for Roger over the last years. He's not leaving us. I haven't let him do that yet, so he will be still there to help me and guide me through this. As you can see, I still need quite a bit of help, so luckily I have someone to help me with that. <laughs> Just getting in practice, and it's overrated. Any other business? Thank you very much. I'd just like to thank the exec. I'd like to thank Bev, Melissa, and the members. Thank you all very much. Closed.